Hi, I'm Mike Hughes, and today we're going to go over rain management. And what I mean by rain management, do we have our reins too long when we're riding our horses, or do we have them too short when we're riding horses? Well, definitely too short, and if I have contact with the horse's mouth, you know, that's, that's not going to be a very good thing. And, um, the horse, and if I have them, like, too long, and, you know, something was to go wrong while I'm riding uh, my horse, you know, maybe I don't have enough time to reach down and do a one rein stop with my horse. For example, um, you know, if a crazy bike rider was coming at us down the trail or, you know, some goofball in the, out in the distance was shooting off his guns or anything and it started spooking our horses or, you know, even if it's wildlife out in the wilderness where we're riding, like for example, you know, a couple of years ago I was riding out at Folsom Lake and I was coming out of the forest and I rode in between a mountain lion and her cubs. Didn't even know it because when the, the cubs were on one side of the trail and the mountain lion was on the other side, the mom was on the other side, she came out of the brush. And you know, so what do we do about rain management when it comes to emergencies or you know, stuff like that? Well, like I said, you know, if we have them too tight, that's going to be a problem. And if we have them too long, like they are right here, that might be a problem. So where you want them is, you know, you don't want to have contact with your horse's mouth as you're walking down the trails, but you want to have enough rain so that they're comfortable, so you're not pulling back on them. But if you had to, if you can see my hand here, if there was an emergency and I really had to do emergency stop or flex my horse, I could really automatically just move my hand down and I could flex my horse's nose like this and have them come to a rain, one rain stop. Or if there was more room, I could ask, actually have them disengage his hip like that. So that's what I want to do. So again, you know, too long is going to be a problem. Too short, you don't want to be pulling on your horse's mouth. But you know, if you just have like a foot right in here, like right where it is right there, and you can either ride with one hand like this or you can ride with two hands. When I'm out on the trails, I, I prefer to ride with two hands on the reins just in case you know, something goes wrong because you never know what's going to go on the trails. The trails are really unpredictable because you never know what's going to come out and jump out in front of you. A deer, a bike rider, a bear, a mountain lion, some nutcase, you know, running down the trail with his hands flapping all over the place. You never know. Alright, so um, that, that would be, you know, the first part of rain management. As I like to keep out a uh, foot right there uh, of rain so my horse can, you know, you know have his head and I'm not pulling back on him, but if something went wrong, I can easily reach down and have him flex and disengage the hip if I needed to. Um, you know, just, just stay safe and keep my horse safe. Yeah. All right, so when it comes to the shorter reins, the longer reins, if you have longer reins, you can always just tie them up and put a little knot in them <clears throat> to where it'll be really nice and easy for you. And then you don't have to worry about the, um, the, the, the length of the reins. But you know, sometimes uh, you know when you're starting a number of course, um, you're dealing with behavior problems and all that kind of stuff. You know, sometimes the shorter range are easier because you don't have such a the, the the longer reach coming down here and having to bring your horse's nose around if he was to spook or if they started bucking or bolting or running away or something like that. Um, if the horse is rearing. You would never want to pick up this rein and flex them if they're in the middle of a rear because you're only going to bring them over on top of you. You'd actually let go of the reins at that point. But you know, when, when I'm on um, the unbroke horse, I, I always have uh, shorter reins going on um, because you know it's the first time the horse has ever been ridden, moving around, and if he would try to go to the buffer or something, then I have to have a, a less reach flex him to the right or flex him to the left and disengage his hip back here. It would be less of a reach. So sometimes shorter range are better. Sometimes longer range are better depending on what you're doing with your horse. So when you've already been on your horse for a while and you've ridden them and you've ridden them in the round pin or the arena and let's say you're having trouble crossing a tarp or a creek sometimes, <clears throat> that's when the longer range are going to come into play because if the when we're doing creek crossing or crossing the obstacle, whenever the horse puts his head down and he's looking at what he's about to cross, the horse is thinking about crossing it. And in that case, the longer reins come in handy because he has enough rein to put his head down without me really having to lean forward over him like this. You know, he has enough rein to uh, 
put his head down and explore what he's trying to cross. And always remember when horses are crossing obstacles, it doesn't matter if it's a tarp, if it's a creek, if it's a wooden bridge, if it's uh, going over a log. You know, it really doesn't matter. If he puts his head down, he's thinking about crossing it. And if you have the longer reins on him, you know, you're able to sit back where you are and let him explore what he's about to cross, but at least he's thinking about it when he puts his head down. All right? So I hope that helps you out, and uh, we'll, we'll see you the next time. Thank you.